Brainstorming and sharing ideas is the funnest part of the creative process. We decided to skip the boring part of actually making stuff and just do the fun part. I'm your host, Tom Walma. I'm Todd Garvey. And I'm Lisa Green. And this is Creativity Wasted. Okay, so I'm going to expand on uh, last month. Um, Sean <laughs> from uh, Comedy Project, I'm blanking on his last name. Francis. Sean Francis. Um, his idea was an idea he had when he was a kid. It was called drive through Buffet. So it's like oh, um, it. you take like a car wash building where the car drives through and you just stick buffet tables in it. Oh. So you just grab the food. And we were sort of riffing on that. And I came up with a modification. Like, what if you're at like the McDonald's drive through menu where you're ordering and talking into the, the microphone thing? What if instead of being a menu, it was a live video of a buffet? And they're scooping it for you. And they're scooping it for you. So you're saying like a little more, a little more, or with buttons like on the menu, maybe you could reach out from the drive through and press buttons up, down, more, more. They're putting it in like the styrofoam or whatever that you can drive away with, like the leftover or take out containers you can even say like where to put it in the container maybe uh like don't mix this and this i don't know what people typically would yeah it's like skip the green beans give me some potato wedges a little more of this a little more of this (laughs) Um, does this seem hot maybe maybe even asking questions i guess you'd have to like tell them to move the camera or It'd be like a so GoPro be- on their chest, and they're just kind of like, they just kind of have a tray, and they're just kind of like walking down to the next one. You're like, oh, no. And they move down to the next one, and, then, and you're like, yeah, give me some of that. And you just see the GoPro feed, you know, and then they move to the next tray. They also have for a delivery service and have an app. You could have even like kiosks, like let's say, because I used to work in a five-story office building. In the bottom of the building, you could have the drive through menu uh, with the screen, but the actual restaurant is 10 miles away and so you just order it and then as you're driving home they're driving it to your house so it's like a drive through that's nowhere near the actual building you can do something like that <laughs> the actual getting of the food and putting it in the container could be a person could be a robot robots taking all our jobs all our good scooping jobs <laughs> <laughs> And the delivery could be a person delivering. The delivery could be a robot. Uh, so it's it's all <laughs> like flexible. So I would call this the remote buffet. You don't scoop your own food. You you watch some some other thing do it in the monitor. I like the idea. You can have as much food as you want. So it's not like Uber Eats or something where they give you like two different size choices, yeah. or one choice. And then I thought, well, they could either charge you by the container or they could charge you by the scoop. They could have, if it's robots especially, they could, uh, in real time, they could weigh it and charge. You could see the cost amount going up per scoop. So if you had yeah, like... Yeah, that's what eight, we do it at the grocery stores. <laughs> yeah, when you're getting it at the deli. <laughs> and I, I thought it would be cool too. Like, um, it's typically at a buffet, you're going to eat that food. Like, yeah. Maybe you have a calorie limit. Like, I want to eat less than 800 calories. So as it's scooping, you see the calorie amount go up. And you could say, oh, that's too many. Take a little off. And then you'd see the calorie amount go down. Because if you have the weight of the stuff in the in the scoop thing, you can calculate. You can set everything by the calories. Yeah, Some- your, your whole little, your whole little uh, uh, kind of strict regimen. If you ate what you're supposed to eat, it would suck, you know? Yeah, I've actually yeah. been thinking about that. I need to start doing something. I think I think if, if, if there was an app, a buffet app like this, <laughs> where you app. set a calorie limit, I mean, at first it would suck because you wouldn't know what to get. You'd immediately hit your calorie limit, and you'd be like, oh, shit, yeah. that's all I get. And so you might decide to go over. There might be somebody who just takes an hour just a little more a little less of this a little more of this okay i don't want this i want to you might have to keep picky people from like 
wasting its time. Maybe once once it's in your plate thing, it's it's in. It's like you can't take it out again. Like for, yeah, but if you're like worried about your calories, buffet probably isn't the best bet for you to begin with. Like that's be honest. Well, but it could be though <laughs> with technology. Sucks, and that's not bad. You're like uh, one tablespoon of mashed potatoes. I think that would be calories. the easiest way to diet. <laughs> I would just never buy food in this store. <laughs> I would just buffet everything with my calorie goals. <laughs> that would be the easiest way to do it, don't you think? Nice. That would definitely be the easiest way. They just create it, create every plate for you. Portion control where you don't have to do any math in your head. You don't <laughs> have to have food in your house that's beckoning you to eat it like because you're hungry. Um, I think that would be cool. So, yeah, yeah, that's my idea. It's not super funny. No, it's cool, though. Oh, here, here's, here's something. That, so when I was a kid, I went to Ponderosa Steakhouse, and I was told that they had ice cream. Yeah, yeah. And I saw what I thought was ice cream. I filled my plate with it. It turned out it was butter. Oh. <laughs> so as a kid, the like the manager came by and like, why did you <laughs> take that much butter? And I got like embarrassed in the Ponderosa. Damn, they embarrassed like, you, Tom. The whole restaurant, everybody nearby was laughing. Oh, he took me. He thought it was ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like, the, uh, the, dish, the dishwasher and like the salad bar guy comes on. They all start laughing at you. People too. at other tables. <laughs> um, it, the yeah, servers are all. Like, I've never gone been. to Ponderosa since then. Well, I think they don't <laughs> exist. But uh, my first reason, job but. was at was at a Ponderosa. Um, okay. I lived in Bay City. Sure, just heard uh, Bay City, Tom. Michigan. Yeah, and uh, I remember, Tom, I remember you grabbing that ice cream, and I remember laughing. Like, <laughs> that's not to be honest, yogurt. they deserved laughter, but as a kid, I, I, I didn't enjoy being <laughs> Like, the humiliation, like, as a kid, just wasn't cool. Uh, no, um, yeah, I was, uh, I was in charge of the cold bar, you know, making sure that the romaine was fresh and the croutons weren't soggy. That was... That was my duty when I was a little Ponderosa boy. And I kind of wonder, too, like, as a kid, was I tall enough to even see the labels? That might have been part of it, too. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I mean, if you had, like, the remote buffet, you couldn't make that mistake. The, the robot well, gives you butter you as a practical joke. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you could maybe label things better. Uh people wouldn't be coughing on the food because there's either just one person working there handling all the food. So it might be good. If you lay sanit more sanitary. sanitary. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here's, here's the thing. Maybe the, I don't know if this is a possible, like I know that cameras can like, like infrared cameras can see like body temperature, you know, like those cop things where they, oh, yeah. they so I wonder if it could like point at the food and tell you like if it's cold or not. Like, so when you're in the app, <laughs> the camera's looking at the food. I wonder if you could have, like, a little, like, red X in the middle with, like, a number saying, like, how hot the food is. They could do that nowadays for sure with technology. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other thing is I thought, well, if you're at a buffet, like, in person, like, civilians scooping the food, <laughs> civilians, you need to, like, have normal, like, utensils. But like, if if it was a remote buffet, like in your the machine or the the worker was doing the food, it could be some sort of specialized utensil, or it could be like a pasta extruding machine, like a Play-Doh thing, or something that they just press a button and it oozes out. So like, they could um, keep it warmer, maybe even, and they could make it more efficient and like it like cooks it inside of itself. Cooks it inside. Comes out, yeah, and comes out all like. Freshly boiled, you're like, damn, fettuccine, you looking yeah. bright. You know? and then it like jack it, it, it seagulls the the Alfredo sauce on you. You know. <laughs> oh shit! Now I have to leave the seagulling part. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the, you could even have like a special restaurant that it's all like. 
extruded all the foods like shrimp extruder, potato <laughs> fry extruder. That's like a like a dystopian like Star Trek type of thing, but uh, maybe it would be like cheaper if you did it that way. No, I think that app, that app, that buffet would be pretty fun. The 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 calorie counter on the app would be uh, utilized. I'm sure a lot of people would uh, have it like set, and then they would just like blow right past it. They were like, "What?" But most importantly, that would help because you got to know. Yeah, you'll you know. know. You don't know. And no one's half the battle. You're in the dark. <laughs> Any last thoughts on my food buffet idea? Would you guys use it like a yes or no, thumbs up, thumbs down? I would use it. I think it would be more sanitary. Mm-hmm. Man, we make a lot of food at home. I don't, I don't cook at all. Uh, I just eat dinner, cook much. Sal- pre-made salad. That's what I eat. Yeah, we're, I'm pretty – I like cooking. I think I would use it, but not religiously. I would use it. I wouldn't use it to like keep my diet in check. I would use it just for the novelty of watching a robot see all my fettuccine and Alfredo. Um, <laughs> call it good. <laughs> yeah, maybe you could even have a thing with like maybe not drugs or whatever, but like no, I'm down for that with alcohol <laughs> or anything like that requires a dose. Like they just like measure out a, a, a measure joint it worth out. and they roll it for you. Like, what's the legal limit? It's gonna give you something that's gonna get your blood alcohol like <laughs> just just below. Like this is the maximum amount of beer that. Yeah. Oh man, dude. Like you put in your weight and it judges how much alcohol it would take to intoxicate your blood al- <sighs> blood alcohol content to. Point zero seven nine, which is legally under the limit, <laughs> and everybody's just towing the line. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Forget the buffet thing. Just, just yeah, the alcohol. Just have a centrifuge yeah. and a scale <laughs> and a really? bitchy computer that judges you. <laughs> this alcohol like you in this, this body? No, nah, this much. Yeah, I always We're wonder. Almost at the uh, limit. Because I'm not not a big drinker. I, I will drink at like comedy things. Is like I don't really know like what my limit is as a teetotaler. Like if I had two drinks, am I above the limit? I don't know what's in every drink. Like what the alcohol content levels mean for everything. Yeah, and then and yeah. then you and then you go to one place, you know, and they make it by the books. So you think you can have two of them, but then you go to another place and they're pouring doubles and extra heavy on the double and. Next thing you know, two of those got you way more messed up than you remembered the last time you had two at a different yeah. place. Yeah, yeah. I guess there's, everybody has to worry about that. But I think I especially, just because I'm ignorant on things like that. When they start making them kind of hard, <laughs> you just got to up the cocaine a little bit. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> My kind of man. I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> I always thought you should have a bar that had beer dispensers at it, so you don't even have to mess around. You just fill your beer up right at the bar. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't they, know why they... you think so uh, with credit are, cards and stuff they could do that. There is a bar that has... Um, so it's a glass, and the actual fill, spo- fill is on the bottom, and you put it on, a, on the, your table, and a plunger pops open the bottom, Fills it up from the bottom up, and then and then drops it. And um, oh, really? Yeah, that. But it's not everywhere. And I don't even remember the bar that I saw who that had it. I used to work for Dan Henry, which is um, the Miller Coors Distribution Center for Mid Michigan. And one of the one of the salesmen like uh, was like trying to push it for the market area, but it was like the craziest thing. It was like a plunger from underneath that like popped the bottom of the glass up and filled it and then it dropped down and you grab your beer you got your beer and it was just right available at your table that you were sitting at cool yeah, yeah that's that yeah that's that beer vending machine just like you're talking about like a pneumatic tube system of different drinks going to every table is that that what you were describing no it's like um you so you go you set <laughs> the table and then you pick the beer that you want and they load they load a five gallon barrel 
onto that table, and then you guys are all it's all getting filled from that keg underneath the table. Oh, that the was keg how is that. The table. <laughs> yeah, yep, and it's all CO two lined. That is cool. Yeah, I think there's a lot of like innovation there could be in the restaurant space. Do you guys remember like full full service convenience stores? Like what they, it's like a drive. It's like a drive through, and then you drive through the store, and then they ask you what you want, and then they. I've only it. seen them shut down. There's still a couple. There's like one in Saginaw, but I was thinking about like doing it like one of those full like full services, but it be for growler fills. Ooh. You guys remember growlers and howlers? Mm-hmm. And you you have to seal them. It's a half yep. gallon jug that you can mm -hmm. reuse for um, alcohol. They have like growlers and howlers and prowlers and crowlers. And I'm not making those up. Those are all like real canisters for alcohol. It doesn't yeah, stay good for super long. <laughs> no, it's like <laughs> as a two I have liter. discovered. It's like, yeah, it's like a two liter, but the carbonation isn't sealed as good as a two liter. So as soon as it gets filled up, you have like two days to drink it. You know. But it's like a container that's sealed enough that you can legally have it. Yeah, in your send car. them on their on their. Well, because like you can go to a brewery here in Michigan, get a growler, and then drive home with it, and it's the same thing, capped and sealed, filled with their beer. But I was thinking about like the little drive-through for growler fills. You fill it, you cap it, you seal it, and then you send the driver off on their merry way. You know. And it's like you get to sell beer, but you don't have to deal with the drunk people. A fill station, but it's a beer fill station. Any shows or anything you guys want to plug? Thanks for coming out. A queer showcase. That's going to be on October 11th. That's next week. 734 Brewing. Other than that, Depot Town Comedy. The open mic 734 Brewing. Wednesday. Always great. Always accepting folks that want to do that. Google Forms on the Facebook page. Always love having people. You can find me at Dr. Decide on all socials, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Snapchat, it's all the same. Um, and then check out my podcast, Cornbread and Beans. I do it with fellow comedian Darius Kennedy, and uh, it's a lot of fun. We're on uh, Spotify, Amazon Music, YouTube. You can tell Alexa to play Cornbread and Beans, and she'll start playing my podcast. So nice. it's everywhere. This has been a production of Planet Amp Podcast. Powered by Pinecast.